Hey, this is Ryan again. Just wanted to give you a quick update. I've got the uh, apparatus most of the way put together, the protein skimmer. Just wanted to give a quick uh, walkthrough of what we've got so far. At this point, it's not quite ready. Uh, mostly, I'm just doing the pressure testing uh, with all the solvent bonding or gluing, if you will, of the PVC. So, I'll give you a little walk around here. The system. I did simplify just a little bit. Basic gist, I've connected for, for what right now just a quick uh, input with a standard hose. This is your bypass valve, so if you want to just run the water through the tank to work on everything, open this up, it'll flow into the tank, and then that's your outlet. For convenience over here, I've created a little port to be able to get in there if you need to work on anything, or just to drain it all the way and wipe it out. Um, main line comes up. Again, flow control valve. We'll come back to this in a second. Right now I don't have the pressure hose or the pressure uh, gauge on here. This is important because it helps you know what you're running on your Venturi. You'll notice unions throughout to be able to disconnect this easily. Uh, so the pressure gauge goes right here. Your air inlet is going to go on to this bib. Now it's not connected yet because I need to go get an adapter too. The bib was slightly bigger than I thought compared to the uh, three quarter inch entry that I had previously. And I've fixed up a little mount for the, um, the airflow gauge. Uh, the idea with that being that I may end up with a bigger hose in the future. This is a one inch You'll notice there's additional space here to put in a two inch venturi. If you were ever to do that, you just unscrew these two unions, modify this, or just rebuild this top section and put the new one on. So over here, you'll see the bubbles coming off of the venturi down through this valve. And right here, you come back to a T to this. The reason we have this valve here is because when your bubbles get down to here, you want to have enough water flow that the bubbles just can't quite make it back up. In other words, you want to maximize the contact time with the uh, water. Now, if you have this valve completely closed, it may be that you don't have enough flow and the bubbles will just all rise and accumulate to the top. In fact, that's exactly what will happen right here right now where I've got a hose on it, there's no way the hose is going to provide enough flow. It's going to fill this thing up and you're more or less just going to have a waterfall in here. Which, I'm not quite sure if that'll work at all. Um, my thinking is it might work slightly because if you get down to the bottom of this bubble, you'll have enough momentum from the water to push some bubbles through just from uh, impacting the surface of the water. But in practice, once you get this connected to something with a little more flow, you'll use that valve to be able to control the speed at which water moves through this pipe. Uh, once the foam has gone into there, it collects in this main reaction chamber. Again, like most aquarium skimmers, by adjusting the outflow valve, you can control the water level in here. Something I am considering adding is a, another clear tube. What I'll probably actually do is just put a, a half inch bib on there and then tie up a piece of clear tubing right there. It's a bit cheaper than buying this clear PVC. Um, so you can see very clearly what the water level is. That's the one drawback with building something like this compared to a skimmer is clear acrylic is way expensive. Not that this is cheap, but I found this in a scrap pile. And then the one part I'm still waiting for, I have a four by 12 inch reducing bushing. It's gonna serve as my foam cap. That'll flow out. I've got the pieces for it going to here. The reason for this tube is the owners were a bit concerned about evaporative cooling. And I'm not 100% sure how well this will work, but my thinking is uh, conservation of energy. The energy has to go somewhere. That's got to be going into the air when things evaporate as the bubbles pop. So air is siphoned back off of the skimmit collection container and it's run back to the Venturi valve there to reduce that. And then the one last section, I've ordered another piece of two inch tubing. Um, I will connect that to here. This will be the skimmit collection cup and it's in the shed, but there's a, a half inch pipe that would come off here that has a little drain valve. So 
there's actually no longer a cup at the top it flows over this is your skimmit collection and given that this is a continuous process flow there will be a a valve on that to allow it to flow out to a collection pond so there you have it we're going to go ahead and fill this thing up make sure it holds water and uh, do a little bit of pressure testing turns out that my hose bib here runs at 100 psi so should be all that we need and more thanks out